I just had another situation and I haven't done a ton of research on it because it's so complicated. I wanted to find out if you guys think it's even worth pursuing before I put a lot of time and effort into it. So this is like <laughs> this lady, man, they've got lots of problems. So they filed bankruptcy and then, okay, let me back up. So they had this house under contract, but then I'm not exactly sure what order this happened, but the person who had it under contract decided he didn't want to buy it because it was under, because they were going into foreclosure. No, not foreclosure. Um, what's the bankruptcy called? Chapter 13 bankruptcy. And so he didn't want to deal with that. And so she said um, they were making it so complicated for them to sell the house that they decided to dismiss it. And she said, it's going to be dismissed. It was like today or yesterday, it was supposed to be dismissed. The bankruptcy dismissed or that the property itself would be um, taken out of the action, out of the bankruptcy chapter 13. So I wrote the, in my note that I wrote, it says chapter 13 bankruptcy should be dismissed tomorrow by judge was under contract, but he canceled. Oh yeah. Okay. So sh that's what she said. She didn't tell me what that meant. She just said it was, um, that they were just going to totally dismiss the bankruptcy. That was I mean, her. The bankruptcy story. itself is dismissed. Um, generally, I mean, it can be one of two things. Either they've gone through the whole thing and they're done. And so it's the bankruptcy action is, is terminated or they, the bankruptcy judge has, uh, has picked up on some fraud or something, then what they'll do is they'll dismiss that bankruptcy um, and, you know, and let, let them sort it out outside. In other words, you can't get bankruptcy relief. So okay. either way, it's probably okay. If it's really going to be dismissed tomorrow, you can move forward. What are the metrics on the deal? What are the numbers? Um, <clears throat> okay. So, well, they said they want 117,000, but I think realistically they would take what they owe Right. but they have it under a realtor. And so I said, well, I can't work with a realtor. So if you, if you decide you want to cancel that, I can work with you. But if you want to work, you know, I tried not to tell her she had to cancel it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so they want, they were asking 117, but they owe 107. Um, what else? Sorry. What other numbers do you want? What's it worth? What's the R of? Yeah, I didn't go a ton into that because I was just wasn't sure if I could even go into the bankruptcy. Well, you got to get all the information. You know what to get, Carrie. The yeah you know, rental rates, what the payments are on this thing. You got to get all that information. Okay. Well, my other question, yeah, because I didn't know if I could even do that, and I've been kind of swamped. So I was like, well, I need to find out if I can even, you know, where it was with the bankruptcy situation. So the other thing is she said, well, I think I might have this under contract with somebody and I don't know if I still have it under contract. I'm like, well, obviously I can't buy it if you have it under contract with somebody else. So make her responsible for all of those problems. She's going to have to get the thing, uh, you know, taken out of whatever she's got escrow going on with somebody else. She's going to have to get the realtor out of there. You could buy it subject to assuming, you know, all the rules, assuming there's a, a nice monthly cash flow and there's a little bit of equity in there. Okay. Oh no. Okay. Here's the other part of why, why I figured I'd better ask first. Okay. Because so they got a second loan on this and it's a $25,000 loan and it was a balloon payment. And she's like, this is due in um, June. And so beyond the 107 that's owed or included. Yeah. That's part of it. That's just part of it. So they have to have that 25,000 paid and so I was like, okay, so you can't take monthly payments because you've got to have that twenty five thousand, or else it's going to foreclose. You you so, got to get you got to find out what the house is worth. Which if you want, we can put you on uh, pause and we can take the next call and and we can get back on at the end and tell us what it's worth and what the rents are and all that. Because if this thing's worth four hundred thousand dollars, it's worth going through all this hassle. If it's worth you know one hundred and forty, it may not be. Okay. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll just do a little bit of research and see what I can find on but, it. Uh, so. It's possible that the 25, um, you know, if, if it was a HELOC, uh, potentially it could, it could have been rewritten or crammed down by the bankruptcy judge. If they got a dismissal, the bankruptcy judge would say, listen, not, not on the first, but on the second, I've seen them do that where they'll say they, at least they take off the personal guarantee for non-purchase money 
um, if it, you know, in other words, this is refinanced later on. Typically, you're on the hook personally for that. The judge could have wiped that out. And so, you know, the, the, your exit strategy is going to be different. But you've got to know what it's worth and what would make per month rent before we can give you good advice. Okay. So I don't know the rent, but I do have a good clue on what it's worth. Sorry, I didn't look over my notes super well. Um, so um, she said the realtor said if it was fixed up, she would list it at 155 Probably not um, what messing with. What? Pass. Pass. Okay. Yeah. I kind of yeah. thought, man, this thing is so complicated. I don't want to. So, and, and Carrie and, and everybody else said, you know, to your larger question, Carrie, should I mess with this thing? In any deal you're looking at, you're either looking for big equity or big cash flow or both. So, before you go into all the hassle of, you know, digging up the bankruptcy and calling the judge or whatever, whatever you got to do. Is it even worth your time? Like, what could we sell this thing for? You see what I mean? So, right. but those those are the only two things you're looking for: big equity or big cash flow, or both, right? Right. And so easy enough to figure that out because if, like Jeff said, the house is worth four hundred, all fixed up, shoot, we can move some mountains to get that deal done. Right. Right. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Well, because I was thinking if they owe one oh seven and we could sell it for like one, I don't know. I guess it needs to be fixed up though, because when she said one fifty five, I was on like, there too. So. You're better right. off just not messing with it. Remember, back in the day, and the day was probably February this year or earlier, <laughs> we were looking at, you know, you could pay close to market and you didn't need as much cash flow because we were on an ascending market and all that kind of stuff. I'm telling you, you can you can mark this spot 5.04 p.m. on the 21st, May. This market is going down. And so you've got to price your deals accordingly. You've got to buy better than you were buying in February. Okay. All right. Everybody well, that's kind of. I'm saying this for everybody. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, those were my questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you now, with Thanks, that said, I, I read that there are gravity defying markets out there. There's two of them right now Dallas and Orlando. And I don't know why, nobody knows why those markets continue to go up. Maybe because you can go out and actually see and buy a house now in those markets. But other than that, most markets are flat or dying, suffocating, and they will continue to, to be so. And eventually you'll see that in Dallas and Orlando as well.